I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Episode 12 of Unrolled. My mic. I thought I was ready. Episode 12 of Unrolled. My name is Mike, and this is Chuck sitting next to me. And in the middle, we got no one today. No, so. Nobody. Okay. Mike's all out of friends. I'm out of friends. Who's coming next week? Mark. Mark's going to come back uh, next We're week. recycling friends? Well, he's going to come on because oh. we've started actually doing cigar related stuff oh. so it's going to come on is he going to make this better than the worst cigar and podcast show us how to do it properly is he going to make this better but than... <sighs> he's going to cut up one of his cigars oh so i'm going to rail him about it the entire time so he's going to cut up one of, uh oh one of the cyclops or the yeah. hooligan or whatever yeah. He's right. going to cut up one of them and i'm going to absolutely rail him about it the entire time all right so you want to talk about our? He's looking forward to that. Ninety, our ninety-first subscriber. You want to talk, talk about that? I don't know who it is. I don't either, actually. I just know that we've got ninety-one now. Still have ninety-one? Yeah. It's been kind of a slow week for the Unrolled Podcast. Yeah, last week didn't uh, go over too well. It didn't. So nope. What do we do? What do we do? We had Hinkle on. We had Hinkle on. And the cigar was nice, like it wasn't yeah, garbage. We cut a part of. Uh, Undercrown. An undercrown. And it was beautiful. Like the, right. Yeah. There was nothing to say about it once <laughs> no, it was cut apart. That was, uh, I think that maybe that's why I didn't perform so well. Uh, you know what's funny is you and I rarely smoke together now unless we do this podcast. Because I'm doing something well, and you I'm you don't gone. sit down. Yeah, I don't sit down here. I'm running and running. But I was thinking about that this morning when I come in. I was like, it's like, damn, when was the last time I sat down and just fucking hung out and smoked a cigar and it was like oh tuesday last week this is like my day to to chill for an hour hour or two right. so what'd you get you got a got an old trusty there 45 got a 45 nice uh i got the escobar from uh nas from nas from nas himself no fair enough no it's not he rolls from himself in his mansion in New York. Is he still in the projects? I don't know. Anyway, Nas bought into the Escobar company. They did a rebrand. Surprised it wasn't at the Super Bowl. And uh, <laughs> Dre must not be making money off him. So, uh, so anyway, uh, you know, uh, the 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 branding is beautiful. It's like a gloss black box with uh, gold, and you can't see it at all, but. It's very pretty. Um, black and gold are my favorite colors, so I was drawn to it. The packaging is beautiful. The cardboard box around the black box. It's a nice looking box. Everything about it looks super high end. And the cigars aren't terribly priced. Illinois price is about $15 a stick. So for this size, for I think they call it like a Super Toro or a Gordo, Toro Gordo, or I don't know, just throw a bunch of words in there that end in O, and, and then that's your size. I, I'm going to try to make this more of a worst cigar podcast than what Did it's Did you been. say that's a Corono Toro Gordo? Uh, Corono Gordo Toro Super Coron, Toro. Gorodo. Gorodo. It's a Gorodo. It's a Gorodo. It's a new size. That's going to be our... our it's a Gorodo. It's our uh, right. 13th, uh, 13th uh, size for Table 36 will be the Gorodo. And then Taco Bell will come out with it and it'll be terrible. No, yeah. <laughs> It tastes like everything else on the menu. <laughs> Sometimes cigars and, taste like and everything so else. It's all to Gorona. Yeah. It tastes, tastes like, like everything, everything else. else on the menu. Well, we, we're going to cut up Nyla Del Sol today. Mm. More which, importantly. Which is the exact opposite of everything Mike just said. Um, and what's fun about the Nyla Del Sol, and especially compared to the cigar that we <clears throat> cut up last week, was um, the Undercrown, who is made by Drew Estate. Right. So, this spe- fine specimen, that's going to be, uh, I'm sure it's going to be the same. Oh, I didn't bring a knife. Absolutely the same. I'm going to have to get up. You're going to have to get up get the knife. Yep. Yep. I forgot the knife. I don't see one anywhere either. Yeah. Well, you just probably, probably just squeeze that and break it open. 
Uh, one, one of our best-selling cigars in the probably. whole shop, though. Yeah, they're real popular. I mean, that size isn't popular. That's why I grabbed it. But What size is that? Uh, the big one. <laughs> the one all the way on the right. <laughs> I don't look at the box on them things. <laughs> I don't, so, even, I don't even say the names when I ask, but you want a small one or a big one? Right. Well, sometimes I do, too, if they're just coming in to fill up. Uh, yeah, they don't know what that, what that name means, size means. Anything. They're just going to ask me more questions. Right. Well, you know, it's uh, I, I like to give a little education whenever I'm, uh, whenever I'm selling cigars. Well, you know, they don't care. Handmade cigar in Nicaragua. The people that buy Isla del Sol's, they don't care. They're not looking for an education. Well, the folks that buy looking them, for throat and mouth cancer. That's what they're, they're what they're really looking for is just for something something that everybody can smoke. So that's why it's our number one selling cigar because we sell them by the box for weddings and right. funerals. I sold a guy five the other day. Oh yeah, I, they're not bad cigars. No, I don't. I, 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 don't I, like I don't like them personally, but they're not bad cigars. I like them a ton with uh, with some coffee, just because of the sugar sweetens up the coffee without. I guess right. taking a bunch of sugar in. Well, I drink sweet tea all day, mm. every day. So I just don't need no more sugar. In I my wonder life. if that's why you don't like it. Probably <laughs> because you already have so much sugar going through you. So <clears throat> yesterday was Valentine's Day. Just do anything? I went to the vet. You went to yeah, the vet. I went to the vet for Valentine's Day. Did you get neutered? No. No. Nope. How's dog? I paid three hundred dollars. That's what I did for. <laughs> For uh, Kevin, for uh, yeah. <laughs> what 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 did Kevin need for three hundred dollars? Uh, no, well we had to take a uh, ferret over there to get a inge- uh, um, implant. Oh, oh. Desilin implant. What I'm not that? saying that right. What is that? They ferrets get this thing called um, uh, <clears throat> adrenal, where uh, their private parts swell up. Okay. They start losing the hair on the back of their body, on their like right above their butt, on their tail and stuff. Right. And uh, if it goes untreated, it'll kill them. And uh, and it causes them not to be able to pee and so on and so forth. And uh, so the implant basically takes care of it, fixes it. So. Wow. So. Is that is that a lot of ferrets or just like yeah. really? Yeah. So ferrets either. So one of three things happens to ferrets. They either get insulinoma, which is a terrible wasting away disease, and they die. They go blind and die from old age, which is probably the best thing you can hope for. Right. Or they get adrenal, and they and if you don't treat that, then they die. Gotcha. So. And what's the, like, after you get the implant, what's the, I mean, how long, how much longer does that ex- extend to life? It lasts about 12 to 18 months, the oh. implant does. Okay. But, uh... By the time they get the age where they're losing, I mean, some of them get it young, but by the time they get the age where they're losing that fur to where, you know, you actually catch the signs of it. Right. They, if they've got 18 months, then usually you don't go back and get a second one. Oh, I got you. So, so you're just making the end of life more quality. Uh-huh. Gotcha. I got you. So, yep. so how frustrated do you get, you and Sarah both, whenever you see people get ferrets? For like gifts and stuff. I tell people not to get ferrets. Right. I get asked all the time. Yeah, you have a lot of ferret knowledge. Uh, I get asked all the time, uh, what do I do? And I say, don't buy one. Right. <laughs> the food's expensive. It doesn't matter what you're going to It doesn't even matter. You can buy the expensive food. And, and your ferrets will be healthier. They'll smell better. And uh, they, probably, they probably won't develop insulinoma as fast. But it doesn't matter. You still, they still have the risk of developing insulinoma. So no matter what you do to them, because it's, it's when they descent them and neuter them, at the, uh, at the ferret factory, right, or whatever, at the breeding place, it causes something. And and this is they don't really know, but this is their best guess because in the wild they don't really get it. Right. So it causes something to happen with their hormones, and that causes them to, to have a higher percentage of uh, insulinoma. And insulinoma is a terrible thing to see. So, what, uh, What's their life expectancy in the wild versus uh, in captivity? You know, I really don't know. Really? I really don't know. But in captivity, we've had one live up to six years, I think. No, no. We had a blind one that was at least eight or nine. Oh, wow. So, and that's, that's uh, unexpected. 
it's not. So that's kind of like a lot of dogs, like the life expectancy. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I I I kind of house sit some. It's amazing how many pets I've like house sat, like people move or whatever, and I. <laughs> You know, a friend of mine moved and there was a giant snake in the pawn shop. Uh, there was, uh, you know, I've had a tarantula at my house uh, for a few months. And uh, and then uh, I, had, I had a couple of ferrets. And tarantulas then, don't live that long. Tarantulas only live like a few months. I no. This, really? one, this one had been living for some years. Um, I didn't know that. He did pass on my watch. Um, and uh, just right when I was getting comfortable with him to where he could climb on me. Right. And, uh, you know, just because it's, I mean, he was huge. He was, you know, this big with his legs. I mean, yeah, I mean, he was he was a giant tarantula. I didn't know they lived that long. Yeah, so uh, I don't know how, how old he was, but I know he'd been around for a few years. <clears throat> and then, uh, so, you know, we fed him, you know, whatever the internet said to feed him. And uh, I forget what, if it was crickets? Cricket. I think it was, yeah, I think it was crickets. And then... Um, and then he he passed on our watch, and then we watched the chinchilla for a while. So um, that was kind of cool, you know. We found him a new home. So he was he was fun. We had a we had a cat that was uh, had one ear and was like permanently stoned, like and and I don't know. He was just kind of he was old. Oh, he I was, wonder whose cat that was. Right, exactly. So the chinchilla was young and fast, and the chinchilla ran behind this couch, and this slow-moving cat steps and stares at the end of the couch, and the chinchilla's running around the rest of the house, and the cat's still staring where it went in, waiting for it to come out. So we had a lot of... It was fun. It was fun watching. It was fun watching those ferrets, too. Um, watching them run was really neat. and uh, They're fun. They, they've all got a different personality, and you never know. You know, you might get one that's real loving. You might get one that's a complete asshole right you never know and that they like each one has got their own little saying and uh but like uh nico we got one that that is absolutely lazy this is the laziest animal i've ever seen in my life really and uh he got thrown out of my house um this time about 2015 i think he got thrown out somebody just Drove by and dumped him. Really? Full of ticks. He had so many. So I was in the garage working. And uh, it was pouring down rain. I was in the garage working. And I, I had to walk around from out from, instead of going through my house and in, straight into my garage, I had to walk around for some reason. I don't remember why. But I walked around, and out of the corner of my eye, I seen something dart underneath the porch. Right. And I knew what it was instantly, and I thought it was one of ours that got out. Right. So I uh, I went to grab him and catch him, and... And I instantly tossed him back in the room where the rest of the ferrets were. Because <laughs> you thought it was one of yours. <laughs> and then I went back outside, and I thought about it for a minute, and I went, wait. <laughs> so I, I uh, <clears throat> almost. Right. I, uh, I, I almost slipped already. I called Sarah at work, and I was like, how many black ferrets do we have? Because <laughs> we had a lot at that time, and I, didn't, I really didn't know how many we had. We had a lot at that time and from rescuing them, just simply from rescuing them. Right. And uh, we weren't buying them. Oh, of course. And uh, uh, she was like two, and I said, "Oh, and so so." And that's the thing you got to so like if you get a, get rescue a new one, you got to separate them for like two weeks. Sure, you sure. can't just put them in. Right. So I went in there and found him, and when I picked him back up, that's when I noticed all the ticks. Because before I just grabbed him, and threw him in the house. Right. That's when I noticed all the ticks. So that was an expensive vet bill too. Really, was, removing all he the ticks. Was covered in ticks. So, covered. Do you think he was like an outside thing or an outside fair? He'd been outside, I think. So what I think happened is I think him and uh, the other white ferret that we got two days later, oh. my neighbor. So I think him and the other white ferret were found together. They were going to keep the white ferret because he didn't have ticks all over him, and uh, they were going to keep him. But they didn't know what to do with the ferret with ticks all over him. Right. So they, uh, so they just dumped that one, and then they decided they weren't going to take care of the white one either. Well, by that time, I had already found out. I had already found this one, and I was pissed off that somebody dumped him sure. in the rain in right. February. Right. I was mad about it, and I had told all the neighbors. I had went around and asked everybody, and I said, well, if I find out who just dumped this ferret in the rain, they're going to have a problem. Right. And so then two days later, the neighbor knocks on the door and says, hey, my sister. Okay. So I took that ferret in, too. 
Do you think it was the same one? I, I think it was the neighbor. Yeah. I think the neighbor dumped him. What are you doing there? Well, I was trying to fix this stool. <sighs> trying to fix this stool without without getting up. So how many ferrets do you currently have? Five or six. And they have their own room, right? Uh, like, not anymore. Oh, really? Not anymore. Because oh. they're all really old now. Oh, they're okay. All old, so they're you, downstairs with us. So we got two that uh, don't come... That don't come out of, uh, they come out of the blanket to eat and drink and do their thing. And then they go right back in the blanket and go back to sleep. That's how old they are. They're both blind, too. So that's how old they are. And then we've got uh, two, well, we got three, uh, including Nico. Nico doesn't come out that much no more. He'll come out and, he'll come out and throw himself on the floor in front of you because he wants special food. Oh, yeah? So he'll come out and just throw himself down on the floor <laughs> and lay there all dramatic like. Yeah. And then we've got two that still run around and play. They're still young enough that they run around and play. Well, Cerberus isn't actually. He's pretty old, but you know, I don't. We don't think he's a. Uh, we think he's part uh, European polecat or something because he's got a different face and every or mink maybe. He's got a different face and everything. Do they crossbreed? So I don't know, but and plus he's mean for no reason. So huh. like he just he'll just walk up and nip your toe for no reason. Well, Can't have your feet. Couldn't well. You really couldn't have your feet on the floor when he was younger. Right. He'd just run around and bite you. <laughs> oh, I had birds too. That was the other thing we ha housed for a while. I've had birds, never successfully. Uh, these were those big birds. I had the uh, I had a sulfur crusted cockatoo, and then I had a salmon crusted malacan. And uh, someone kind of <clears throat> pawned them, or sold them to me, I guess. And I had them in the pawn shop when I first opened. And, uh, and so I, I sold the one to get my money back and, uh, they just, they loved them. This, this, we, well, we called it Julie. I have no idea if the sex was correct, <laughs> but she would always go, hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. You know, and it was, it was fun, you know, and, uh, she was, she was, uh, she definitely liked males a little more. And then we had, uh, Fred. And Fred was, uh, looked like the, uh, there's an old show, Columbo or something. I don't remember. Yeah. Was that the one where he had a, the, the cockatoo? I don't remember. So anyway, he. Uh, Cockatoos are mean. Uh, this cockatoo was very mean to me. Uh, he bit me quite, and you know, they can crush like a walnut. Mm -hmm. Like they are seriously. You take your finger off. Yeah, they're seriously strong. And so he got me one time. Uh, I had to move him to the house because he was attacking customers. So I moved him to the, uh, the house. Good instincts. Right. And, uh, well, it was funny. He would reach out with his claw and he would grab them by their shirt or whatever he can grab <laughs> and then pull them in and then bite them. So, and then somebody came to show me their bruise that my, you know, bird and, you know, I, yeah, I was like first year in business so of course right. i'm freaking out so i'm like that by then the birds already moved right as soon as right. it as soon as it did that to a customer and so uh so i moved the i moved the, the bird to the house to get rid of it and uh he came in he's like man your bird bit me and i was like what bird <laughs> you never had a bird <laughs> no i never had a bird uh there's still damage around the shop from that bird uh he chewed on uh window sills um he chewed on every guy. He was just, he was a menace, man. And then I gave him to a, a guy and, um, this guy and this bird bonded so much. Uh, he went down, uh, his son's name was Raven and, uh, he played football for the Oilers and this bird would be in the middle of the huddle and they would, they would do their go Oilers thing. And then Fred would like, wow and open his wings up too you know it was like it's kind of the mascot for the football team at that time so you know it was i'm, I'm glad they both found good homes <clears throat> i don't know where fred is now uh the person i gave him to uh had passed away and uh there was some dispute about it so between we well, yeah, had parents lived to be 80 years yeah something and, like that and i didn't know how old these these two were i had this really cool picture of uh julie holding a, a bucket of fried chicken and I just thought that was super funny for some reason. 
she's she's holding it's an empty bucket so the, but she was holding it with one claw and then she was standing on the uh, you know on the other on a pole and she's just holding a full bucket of chicken and and for some reason it was super funny and then uh fred w- could say hello and he would say cracker he wanted a cracker but he would always say them together hello cracker hello cracker so no matter who canceled ca- no matter who came in to the shop he would go hello cracker hello cracker <laughs> So it was really funny, you know, like uh, just just and like he'd bite him. Right. And then he'd bite him if he didn't get his cracker, you know, <laughs> and like the kid, you know, there's like, you know, there's people bring their kids in the pawn shop and stuff. And and, uh, you know, this kid's like, can I feed your bird? And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> like, like and then so Fred just over there screaming, you know, he's like doing the head thing that he does. And he's like, right. hello, cracker. And he just says it more and more aggressively, you know, and I was like, I absolutely hate this bird, you know. <laughs> Like, I'm trying to do reports for the cable business, and it's like, hello, Cracker! And I'm like, oh, you know, just be quiet for an hour. You hey, know? it's a good good door mm-hmm. ringer. Good doorbell. There's a parrot at the uh, the fish place where I was, went to get the fish. Yeah. And then me and Sarah went up there Sunday, and it's, there's a sign that says, don't walk past Alex, he'll bite. And I said, he does, you do look grouchy. And I said it to him. And as soon as I said it, he started screaming. Oh, yeah. And didn't, didn't shut up the whole time I was, no. the rest of time I was in there. I insulted him, made him mad. So you went up there yesterday. Did he, did he remember you and start screaming? Yeah. No, yeah. No, 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 no. No. No, he was fine yesterday. Yeah. He was, he got mad though, because I said, you do look grouchy. <laughs> you know, they're so cute on uh, like YouTube, right? Right. I, well, I just shared that one. That one that cusses when the guy smashes the cage. <laughs> yeah. I love that thing. Hilarious. Uh, this one. Did you lock the door? I did lock the door. All right. It's just a street walker. There we go. That lady was checking out her new fish tank. Yep. So uh, I was gone all day Saturday working on the Alton building. And whenever I leave Chuck alone for, uh, you know, a full day, something's got to be different. And uh, he gets mad at me whenever I change things. I just bought a fish tank. You bought a huge fish tank. 125 gallons. It's not that big. Tank. It is pretty large. Like he was, we, he was trying to get me to buy a 75 with it. And I was like, no, dude, I don't need that one. I want this one. So now we have a 125-gallon fish tank. We have 12 fish. Is that the actual I don't, count? I don't know. 11 or 12 fish. <laughs> they're very pretty. What, fish in it. what kind of fish are they? They're cichlids. Cichlids. Uh, and they're all the same because they're all different. They they look all different. They're all is that just the brood? They're all the same kind. Okay. They're all lim lambido. I only told me the name of them, and I was supposed to remember it because when we go back up to get more fish, I'm supposed to tell him that way he knows because they all get along. Right. That certain breed all gets along. So. So you got some libido, something like that. Right. Something like that. Well, I got there was. Other colorful fish in there that were actually cheaper, but those were a decent size. So, so yeah, they get up to four inches. I don't know. Those guys do, and they're about two and a half, three inches now, so they'll get a little bit bigger. Yeah, I don't know how big they get. We need to get some like uh, castles or car- yeah, throw some car parts on there or something. We need some. We need some tank decoration because that there's none in it. Yeah, a couple there's, oysters. There's in a the couple. Skull. Yeah, there's some things in it, but there's nothing. Yeah, right. there. I think they're too big to even fly in what we have, so we need to get something. Uh, there's a big hole in the back of that skull that's in there, so they should be able to get in that. Yeah, true. So yeah, there was. Um, so that's kind of neat. So we're gonna move the move the shop around a little bit, so you'll have a spot to uh, just kind of chill with no TV and just watch the fish swim, enjoy your cigar, have a conversation. Nice and quiet. Yeah. Nice and quiet. Unless it's Friday night. So Friday night seems to be loud, drunk, and one wheeling. So. Um. You know, I got busy Saturday night, too. Did you? I was fairly busy in here Saturday night. Friday uh, Friday was fun. I had a good time Friday. So uh, we had uh, all kinds. Of, there was, there was uh, the most hairless man I've ever seen showed me his burn mark on his butt. You missed that part. Oh, thank, yep. thankfully I missed that part. Yeah, if you're in the intro, there's a guy doing a burnout in front of the cigar camper on his motorcycle. And He's louder than that motorcycle, too. <laughs> and so he... Uh, <laughs> So he came in and he, uh, he was, uh, you know, there's a few other guys here that ride. And so everybody's just getting along and having a great conversation. And he was talking about how his, uh, how he burnt his butt on his header pipe on his motorcycle. 
And I said, were you riding naked? He goes, no, not this time. <laughs> he goes, I, he was warming the bikes up and, you know, just running them because they, you know, it's been cold. We haven't been riding anywhere. And, uh, he bent down to look at one and backed into <laughs> the other one, backed into the other one and burnt his butt cheek. <laughs> with a, so then he had to show us all. And then it wasn't the burn that I was impressed with. It was the lack of hair on this guy who's what 50 something yeah lack of hair like i have more hair on my arms than he probably does on his whole entire body but his nickname is cue ball so everything makes sense right right <sighs> hairless hairless like babies have more hair than this dude he's so loud he is oh loud god he's so loud for such a short guy too right <laughs> but it was fun he uh there's a video floating around somewhere instagram yeah, you, you on, on share a, it to the share it to the unrolled page of uh, him holding Jamie up by his throat. By his, <laughs> That's what he's like. You're holding shirt. me. He's like you're holding me by my throat. <laughs> his shirt was cutting off his <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> uh, it was a good time. It was a real good time. He he did all that bragging about skateboarding for all that time, and he was he was the only one that fell off mm. several times. Cue ball didn't fall off. Cue ball didn't fall off. Nope. I thought he hit the ground once. Nope. Well, I took uh, I took the. Uh, one wheel over to Soulard last week. The weather was nice. I dropped some cigars off uh, over at Grand Cru. And uh, I had it in the car because I was like, well, I'm going to go ride around Soulard for a little bit. Uh, but the snow hadn't melted as much as it did here because they have a lot taller buildings. Right. And uh, the sun is also blocked by the same buildings. So it was still pretty cold. So I got a couple miles in. Um, it was just treacherous and nasty. But... Uh, before I took off around town, uh, there was a guy from Kansas City in there selling cigars. And uh, I got him out on it with his <laughs> cowboy hat. And uh, so it was pretty cool. So uh, Corey, uh, Corey from Kansas City hopped on it. And, you know, I was like, dude, this is redneck stuff. Let's just go do redneck things. Please. I'm going to uh, take the new XR around the block. I'm going to see how it does on the streets. I'm going to see if it does better than the pint does on the streets. So, you know, our uneven, terrible-ass roads. Today you are? Yeah, I'm going to see if it boggles as much on these roads as that pint does. We should uh, make this a shorter podcast and get out before we open. It's probably still a little too cold, but you got to go to Grafton. I do. i got to go to Grafton and stock the Grafton winery. Um, you should you should convince your kid to come up here, and we'll both go to Grafton. <laughs> go right around Grafton? Right. That'd be cool. Right. We'd have to stay on the main street because everything else is uphill. <laughs> Up a steep hill, every one of them. Well, except for the river, it's uh, downhill. Yeah, well, and that's all gross right now because of the all the snow and plowing and stuff. So everything's gross right now. You picked up board four. No, yeah, no, I'm pay, four. I'm going to pay you four later. So it's a forty-two oh nine too. It's a good board. So we have two XRs and two pints. Yep. Cade's got a pint X. Yep. Murphy's got a, a XR and, and he's a pint. Got an XR. And his daughter's got a pint. Yep. Um, we I can think his buddy's got an XR. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. There's a kid that uh, hit me up on Facebook. He's got a pint. Mm-hmm. He's a younger dude, but he's got a pint. And uh, I think not last Saturday, but maybe the Saturday before he hit me up. Right. Because it was decent outside. Right. He was like, "I'm gonna get out. Where are you at?" And I was like, uh, "Working, not, not getting out." Right. <laughs> Is it's it still local? too cold. For, it's too cold for me. I don't. I mean, this sixty degrees. I'll get out in that. But it's got to be sunny at sixty, man. Because it's right. that wind when you're riding. I mean, it just makes my eyes tear up. So that, that fifty degrees. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I don't think it's hitting sixty today. It's supposed to. It's Is supposed it? to be uh, fifty eight? Nice. Fifty nine degrees today. Very cool. Snow on Thursday. Right. So welcome that's, to the Midwest. Right. I'm so tired of it. I just want some warm weather. I'm excited. Uh, we're we're riding down to. Oklahoma in June. Uh, we had Hinkle on yesterday, and I think Jared's going to go too. So last week, last had week, Hinkle on last week. What did I say yesterday? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what day it is. Yeah, Mark's going to come on next week, and he's going to cut apart a Cyclops or uh, uh, who again? Right. Um, Good job saying both names right. Um, well, I usually say the anchor. Yeah, because that's what's on it. Right. It's his fault. <laughs> he did that. It's his fault. What is uh, going on? What? I don't know. What's going on? Highway department's blocking traffic. Oh, they're uh, filling potholes. Oh, what? Yep. They've kind of been on it this year. Yeah, whatever's out filling potholes. East Alton will go fill the potholes. And that's the worst road around here. 
But uh, the whatever it is, they're not filling potholes. Hmm. Just so you, you know, just so they can scrape them all back out Thursday when it snows again. Right. It makes perfect sense. As long as you get the overtime. Makes perfect sense. As long as you get the overtime. They're saying um, seven inches of snow. No way. Yeah. Nuh-uh. Yeah. Are you serious? Yep. I should watch the news. That's the last thing I've seen anyway. I don't know if it's changed, but that's the last thing I've seen. I think they literally just threw some asphalt down and drove off. <laughs> like, I don't uh, He was over when I come up. He was over tamping it down oh, and, doing, okay. and doing it. That was just super quick. Halfway right. It's still cold mix, so it still doesn't. Yeah, it's not going to seal. It doesn't anything. stick or nothing, so. Not. So these roads are just awful, and they don't do nothing about them. We got ladies night February 24th. It had to be rescheduled because last time there was um, seven inches of snow. Isn't that, isn't that on a Thursday? It is. Isn't that firefighter day? Probably. What La- is it? February uh, 24th. This, that'll be firefighter's day. Yeah, but it's 6 p.m. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So after we close, we kick out all the guys, and then the girls get to come in, enjoy cigars, and do their thing. And right. without, you know, some. I'm gonna. I'm not. I'm sick that day. That's my day. I'm sick that day. That's fine. I'll work all day. Sick that whole day. Yeah. Go ahead. Because Hillary's gonna be here from open to close, <laughs> and then some. So it's gonna go oh. to like six to ten p.m. So that's gonna be a long day. It's gonna be well, a long day. Yeah. I'll come Josh in. will be here open to close because he might as well be a lady too. Yep. Steve's going to be here. Hey, you know, uh, I was very appreciative whenever. So we had material blow over on the roof next door, <clears throat> the number one Mexican restaurant in Redwood Heights. Uh, and uh, it's the second time it's happened. And so I thought I had it all battened down, but I, I didn't. So uh, I told him yesterday. I told the one guy yesterday. I said, uh, I said, you know, I eat over here so much. I can probably drink the water in Mexico by this point. <laughs> Won't hurt me at all. And he just laughs. And, la- and he just laughed at me. He goes, yeah, probably. So uh, so Josh, you know, I called Josh. and so I knew you were working Saturday, so I called Josh. And I said, hey, what are you doing? He goes, uh, I'm at the cigar shop smoking a cigar. Yeah, like, he was here. It's my day off. And I'm like, hey, will you do this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I got you. And then he finished his smoke, and he went right up there. And Josh is good, dude. Josh is oh, super, Josh. super good, dude. And then, he, uh, then I found out that he helped move that. Fish tank. Yep. What they look? What they loaded in? So they went up to uh, my my the guy I bought it from brought it here. Oh, okay. They loaded it in his truck and brought it here. I got gotcha. you. And uh, I was trying I was trying to get him to help Josh, and then I had to go back and see and recruit Jeff. And I was trying to get it here so that I could get water in it before it was time to go home. That way, if I had a disaster, I could come back Sunday and take care of it. But you did. Well, <clears throat> not really. No, you just, not really. I mean, the hose fell out. Right. I uh, I finally lost a game to uh, Jeff yesterday. Well, you've been losing games to Jeff yesterday. What are you talking about? No. You've only won one in the last however many times oh, no. you guys have played. Oh, oh yeah. no. Yeah. I'm on a winning streak. Yeah. I'm on a winning streak right now. Lies. Yeah, no. Nah, I'm kicking his butt. He got me yesterday, though. We tied once. I won one yesterday, and then he beat me on one yesterday. So, I look forward to playing golf with him. Um, what you think about that halftime show? You know, so I... Just, uh, I just want to bitch about it. Yeah, I uh, I watched it. Uh, I watched it on YouTube, some crappy version of it. So, because I didn't watch the game, I just watched it later. Disappointing. Well, so, you know, I, I just think... I think it's I, I think it's very hopeful. Like, you can interpret it any way you want. But if Disappointing. You, you could be a legit crip... From L.A. Uh, no, you can't. And be on TV. Because Snoop was not. <laughs> Snoop was not and was never. He was always claiming. He was not and he was never. He was always claiming. Uh, uh, no. It was disappointing. It could have been so much better than than what they did. So much, so much better. It was terrible. It, was, it could have been so much better. Everybody's complaining now because Eminem kneeled. He wasn't kneeling. He was out of breath. He's almost 50. Calm down. Right. Well, they the all gym, are. The gym is not in his regimen. So, you know, it's like, well, I saw <laughs> I saw people complaining about 50 Cent. You know, he's he's pudgy, right? And I'm right. Like, he's 46 years old. He eats. He's got money. Right. What do you want him to do? Right. He doesn't, you know, he's not in prison. He's not working out. 
eight wow. hours a day. And man, nice. I, I put mine on vibrate. So uh, you know, I put mine on vibrate. <clears throat> I put mine on vibrate, but it still gives me, those still come out. Oh, uh, so uh, yeah, they, I, everybody's complaining about you know or making fun of Fifty Cent. And I remember when uh, they you should uh, make fun of Fifty Cent. He'll come by this place, Willie. Yeah, and then he'll be the only one here when you show up the next day, laughing at you. No. Oh. Is that how it works? Have you not have you not heard about him? No. He bought a whole and in every seat at a J Rock J Rule concert, and then he was the only one there. Was he making fun of <laughs> yeah. J uh, ja Rule? Or every seat so he could be there. <laughs> Is he still a thing? I guess. Is he still alive? I don't know. I'm so bad at pop culture. I just they could have done so much better than what they did. So so I looked it up, and everybody on that stage, Dre will make money. Because, you know, there are gonna, people who don't know who they are, you know, and they're going to go through and they're going to listen. If they liked it, they're going to go through and listen to music. And he will make money off every single person on that stage. He, he'll make money from them going and listening to. Smart man. Their, uh, yeah, you know, good for him. Good for him. But we could have had so much better. So much better. Well, if it's about his pocketbook, then how much better would it be about his pocketbook? I mean, tell, I mean, me, tell me the biggest earners. Under his I label. Mean, here's my problem. You played uh, California Love, which is not a Dre song. It's a Tupac song. Right. Uh, Dre was on it, but right. it's, that's a Tupac. Did he produce it? That's a Tupac joint. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, that was Death Row. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so he probably has the rights to that, right? So Well, Snoop does now, for sure. Yeah, because Snoop bought all that. Right. Right. Good thing that went through before the Super Bowl show, huh? <laughs> but... Um, that's like our Congress people selling stocks, bro. <laughs> but, but, and I really didn't have this problem until it was Karen explained on the internet. Uh oh. Some Karen on the internet explaining uh, why they did the songs they did. I, she, this lady's an idiot. That's all I got to say. But uh, I really didn't have this problem until she started Karen explaining it. And I was like, so wait a minute. You're saying Eminem took the kneel for Tupac, right? But them Dre's parading around East Coast rappers. <laughs> what, Eminem's kneeling for Tupac? No, that's not how that works. Yeah. There's no way, no, no matter how you look at it, Tupac died over that East Coast, West Coast crap. Sure. No matter how you look at it. Even Absolutely. if Suge had him killed. No, Suge didn't have him killed. But even if he did. Suge took a bullet. Even if, Well, yeah, to the arm. Or that man's a massive brick was back then, anyway. The one bullet. <clears throat> But even even if even if it was it you know that would boost record sales and blamed it on East Coast blah 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 sure sure so even no matter what he took he took he died for that right and then, so she's sitting there explaining that and I was like well so then why was Dre parading around if it if it was to honor him then why was Dre parading around two East Coast rappers yeah you know maybe he would have squashed that shit if he was still alive but he's not and he died over that stuff so right. That's back when gangster rap was actually gangster. <clears throat> we don't have that now. No, not at all. Nope. That's not at all. I can't. I and don't then, even. And then Kendrick Lamar was yelling NWA. We could have had NWA. <laughs> uh, most of them. Well, all but one. We could have had <laughs> NWA. I could have done a nice little tribute. I mean, how cool would that have been? That would have been way cooler. Right. I could have had a Tupac hologram. That would have been cool. Why, is, why have we only had it once at Coachella, the Tupac hologram? Like, how do I get the Tupac know. hologram wasn't, here? Wasn't there a um, Michael Jackson hologram? Oh, I don't know. Who was it? They had somebody else. They had somebody else's hologram on some big pop pop uh, concert thing. I can't remember who it was though. So. Yeah, I saw the Tupac one on there. It was pretty pretty awesome. And listen, they were going around saying, "Oh, it's the greatest halftime show ever." Well, uh, well, let me tell you right now. Prince played "Purple Rain." In the rain. And, and and he had pyrotechnics and everything, but but he had man pyrotechnics. But he also, had God gave him special effects. That's how great <laughs> Prince was. God himself gave that man special <laughs> effects. I, I guess I didn't see that one. I've never been a football fan. I don't really watch football. I don't uh, either, but, you know. I don't watch that, the, that either because I can literally watch all the commercials without interruption on YouTube. And they're all garbage now. Everything, I, everything I watch on television seems to be garbage. Like I wouldn't know anything about that halftime show. The old lady made just made me find it so she could watch it. Yeah. 
So, otherwise, I don't know anything about it. Now, the Prince halftime show, I watched because I like Prince. So, I wanted to watch it. But I knew, and I like Dre and Snoop, too, and even 50 Cent. I don't like Eminem. But, um... I just thought it was cool that there was guys that were literally off in the gutter. I don't know about Kendrick Lamar. Well, I mean, that's... I mean, that is cool, you know. I, I, that's, I, I've been saying it was terrible, but it wasn't terrible. It was just disappointing because you just know... It was just a payday. You just know it could have been so much better. It was just a so payday. much better if he'd have let go of his pocketbook a little bit, and and had Yella and Ren and Cube on. We could have got we could have got that. That would have been great. That would have been awesome. Well, we don't know behind the scenes. We don't know who all. You can't tell me. You can't tell me that if he contacted Yella and Ren, who ain't done nothing in how long, <laughs> and Cube and go, hey, Super Bowl halftime. Right. You guys coming? Right. You cannot tell me that they're not coming. They're all coming. Sure. All coming. And Snoop's turn with Cube so, later on this year. So, you know, they still talk. Right. So, you know, they're, that's the thing, though. It's just going to, you know, it's just about who are the biggest ones. I didn't know Kendrick Lamar was big enough to be. He's not. He's just uh, Dre produces him. Oh, He's I on you. the record label. Yeah, because I, I couldn't name you two two songs from Kendrick Lamar. I couldn't Lamar. name you one. Right. He's on the record label. That's, uh, I got that's, you. It was, 50 Cent is, is so if, this, you go, if you go look up 50 Cent after that day, like you never knew who he was, you go look him up that next day, and you're like, hey, who's this fat rapper? <laughs> and uh, you go look him up the next the next day, every song's, every song Dre's going to make money from. Eminem's the same way. Well, they'll, they'll make theirs, too. Snoop's I mean, the same way. So it was just a, it was just a, how long was it? Like 15 minutes? Is mm-hmm. that how long halftime was? So it was a 15-minute commercial for Death Row Records? Uh, yeah, I guess. But Snoop bought that. Everybody's excited about that, too. And it's like, why? They're, he's going to fill it with mumble rappers because that's what's hot. That's what's going to make him money. Imagine if somebody came through and actually did gangster rap again, and they'd be right. canceled instantly. Hey, you know... Here's what I didn't understand. He, he's and he's yelling West Coast, right? Right. So where was the game? You'd make money off the game. How come he wasn't up there? Oh, the game was good too. Right. How I come like he wasn't game. up there? It, you know, if it's West Coast, then why didn't we get some Warren G with a with a Nate Dog hologram even or something? You know what I mean? Nate Dog. It just could have been so much better, so much better, and it was it was disappointing to me. But I listened to. <laughs> Every, every, time. Every, every time. But I listened to rap, so I listened to... We should have had a Wu-Tang halftime. That would have been great. That would be great. That would have been great. Uh, that'd been, and then we'd get, get like a Sean Prince, uh, Sean Price <laughs> hologram. <laughs> I'm all about this hologram stuff. I need more holograms. They better get it together so they can all be holograms one day. <laughs> <laughs> We don't, I mean, look at these guys, they're in their 50s, you know. I mean, I can't blame him for, you know, wanting to get paid on top of getting paid, but no, and they just had so much better. I, uh, I, I don't know. I see, the, I see the memes where it's... Uh, the Karens loved it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's, I mean, it was nostalgic is what it was. I made that meme, so if you see that meme with a Karen, it says on her face, best halftime show ever, I made that. <laughs> I made that. Because they kept, pay, they kept uh, posting the New Balance sneakers. Right. Worst halftime show ever. So I was like, okay, here you go. Yeah, I don't, I just, I thought it was neat that, like, I, like I said, I don't know Kendrick Ma- Lamar's story, but. You know, Eminem or Mary J. Blige's story, but Eminem and um, 50 Cent, all these guys were legit poor dudes from the street that came up. And now they're doing a, you know, a Super Bowl show. When we couldn't hear their music on the radio. How many years later? We couldn't even hear their music on the radio. No, uh, they played, uh, they played, I think they played Let Me Ride. First Dre, first Dre uh, album. They played "Let Me Ride" on the radio. I heard that on the radio. That was on the radio. They played. Um, they played another one off that one on the radio, and then they played one or two. Or they played "Gin and Juice" on the radio almost constantly. So Snoop, Snoop got radio play. They were massively edited, but I mean, look at what we got anyway. So right. 
<clears throat> they played them on the radio. They were on the radio. Uh, 50 Cent was all over the radio with that in the club. Yeah, but that was a, that was a, 10 years later. You know? Well, that's, no, that was 10 years. That was yeah, 10 yeah, years later. About 10 years later. Because that all Dre and Snoop and all that came out in 94, <clears throat> 95, 96. Right. You know, you know what would be you know be my hero? We need like a two short halftime show. I was just looking I, like from what I saw could so, have too, too short too short was too was too I mean that's the other thing it was safe it wasn't you know they did a nice safe so it was know. safe but like then you look at the dancers and stuff like everybody's got their ass out and it's like they like we like people freaked out when uh Janet Jackson had a wardrobe malfunction right. but then you watch what happened on Sunday and you're like you know it's you know I I would have paid a, a premium cable they, subscription to see all that and you know back in the day they uh I don't want to sound like an old guy here but you I know, know you don't watch movies but there's a scary you know what the scary movies are right yeah make fun of scream yeah so there's a scary movie and those guys were dressed like the the gangsters that showed up in the scary movies those guys were dressed like it's great there's a whole <laughs> meme about that on there now too oh the uh like with the, all the khakis and the yeah. flannels or yeah. whatever Dixon could have really got in on that. He could have. Yeah. Yeah. He, he <laughs> might have. We don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Everybody got paid. We'll have to ask him. Yeah. Is that going to be a thing? Uh, I I told Mark we'd be interested in doing that. Right. But he better he better clarify with that guy that we talk a lot of crap that, about what's going to happen. Right. Because <laughs> I think he's going to be unhappy. Well, I'm going to call him Dick Skins the whole time. <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. So what what we're alluding to is uh, Mark Murray might uh, get uh, Danny Dixon on when he's on here, and uh, which I don't know if it's ten o'clock here. It's what is it in Arizona? Just eight or nine? Eight. Is it two hours behind in Arizona? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, and it you, might depend on where he's at in Arizona. Yeah, but I think so. So anyway, we're. Uh, you know that that might happen. So, you know, get our first real celebrity, Danny Dickskin. <laughs> Sounds like a Letter Kenny yeah, uh, character, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> have him right on here. Yep. Right. We talk about his uh, coronavirus flannels. What's that? We talk about his coronavirus flannels. What? Where? What's that? I don't know. Why. They both come from the same place. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. That's just a taste. Uh, so, Mark, you might want to forward this section to him. And let him know that that's just a taste <laughs> of the minute, shit that will be talked. At minute 48. Right. Check it out. Yeah. Probably had a minute of setup. Minute 48. That is just a taste of it. Uh, you're going to Grafton today after we're done? Yeah. I got to run up there and stock cigars. Stock cigars? Yeah. At we, uh, the winery? At Grafton Winery. Running low. I want to get them in before the weekend. Tomorrow i got to move appliances in the morning. My uh, stove and fridge finally came in for the Alton building. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. They're telling me April, and then he calls me and says, hey, guess what's here? Nice. So it's nice that uh, Lowe's has no idea what the hell's going on. So Nobody does. They really don't. Nobody it, it's insane. Clue. Like, you know, I've, 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 I've been. Those damn terrorist truckers in Canada, that's all their fault. It is their fault. It's all their fault. Blocking the roadways. You know, driving around, all that driving around I did yesterday, I was like, you know, the truckers in America would never do that. They don't even have the courtesy to get out of your way. So, what, they <laughs> staying in the left lane on you? Everywhere. You put some miles down yesterday. Where'd you go? Where, where's the first stop? South County. Okay. And, and then back, you... and then Jerseyville, and back, and then I had to go to Hazelwood. That's a couple hundred miles in the car to, in one day. Uh, it was 160-something on your truck alone. Oh, wow. So... I don't mind Hazelwood because I cheat when I go to Hazelwood. Because he's on the back side. Our vet's on the back side of Hazelwood. Take Lindbergh? So I take Lindbergh. Well, he's not on Lindbergh. He's on the back side of Lindbergh. Yeah, like Hattershell or something. Yeah, that's exactly yep. it. Hattershell. Yeah. That's the name of the clinic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clinic. So uh, 
I turn at that first gas station off Lindbergh. You know, you're coming from 367. I turn at that first set of gas stations right there. Take the country way, huh? Yep, and I take all the way back and around. You run into a little bit of traffic, but it ain't nothing like Lindbergh. I used, so, I, I've sold so many of those houses back there. It ain't nothing like Lindbergh. All that new construction that was falling apart right as soon as it was built. We were doing all the loans for them. It's like, yeah, here's a quarter million dollar house at $400 a month. Wow. Well, that's cheap. That was the arm loans. That's cheap. That's the arm. Have you ever Pay seen that uh, for the rest of your life? The the uh, the big short. Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah. Yeah. And that was uh, the guys that were like self tanning and uh, wore too much gold. Right. <laughs> Those. <laughs> that was my role in the in the whole thing. I don't know. It's five thousand dollars alone. I was. I was. It's all about the pocketbook, man. I've done it too. I told every single person that I closed loans with. I, I told every single one of them, you need to refinance right away and don't don't miss one payment. You miss one payment, you're getting your principal. Four hundred dollars is literally just your interest. Jeez. And we had almost it was all backed by the government, so we well, could, yeah. we could sell all the loans we yep. wanted. That's like if yep. I own in a pawn shop, that's like if if we worked there and somebody else had all the money, then we would just loan twenty dollars on a box fan. That's ten dollars. I'm still mad about I was, that. I, <laughs> I'm still mad about this box fan. I, I was uh, who pawns a box fan? You I said was, get the numbers up. Who pays who pays four hundred dollars for a freaking one of them big six volt flashlights? Oh yeah, that's what I couldn't believe when I found it. Yeah, that was you know, I, <laughs> I seen I seen the price tag on it, and I was like, no, because it was it was all old stock. Remember, I was trying yeah. to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Yeah, and I and I took it up and I set it up here, and I was like, well, we're gonna knock this way down, and then uh, and I was like, oh, we can't. <laughs> no, we have too much in it. <laughs> oh wow, you know, uh, that guy uh, that guy won. You know, he won the hustle that day. You get a hundred dollars for a flashlight, right? Well, he come back and got it. Did he really? Yeah. So he come back. Um, well, I took it off the shelf and I just stuck it back because like nobody's buying this. Right. Nobody's buying this. We might as well just put it back. And uh, I brought it back all the way back to the back. And as a matter of fact, and that guy come in with a girl, and he bought. He was buying Xboxes and stuff, and he was saying, uh, "Oh yeah, I remember I pawned this, this, and this." And I go, "You want it back?" <laughs> And I went and got it, and he got he paid it. He bought it. He bought it back. Oh, that's insane. And I, I go, gave it back to him for what he was loaned on it. Not, no interest, no oh, nothing. Oh, nice. Just Get it out of here. Just, you know. Yeah. And he bought it back. And then he come back a month later and pawned the Xbox. So That happens often. So not only did he buy all his stuff that was overpaid for back, he bought an Xbox that day, which we made money from, and then he pawned it, and we made money again from that Xbox. I just wish we had more customers. This area is kind of dead. So I went over to Montre's last night and dropped off a couple boxes of Peacemakers. Packed? Not packed. They had 10 people, though. I mean, that would be packed for us. You know, they had 10 people, and, and it was it didn't feel crowded. Well, I mean, we get them college nerds that come in on Saturday. No yeah. offense to the college nerds. Um are they all training to be pilots? I think so. That's kind of cool. That's super cool. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But um, the one dude's got his pilot's license. Oh, really? Yeah. The main guy that brings so, everybody in. So, um, dude's awesome. So, uh, we got, they come in just about every other Saturday. They've been here on both my Saturdays so far. Really? And then um, in the last month. Right. And then, you know, we got, we got quite a few people that come in, I guess. Yeah, the weekends so. are nice here. Like, it was, it was nice to see so many people laughing and enjoying cigars. And, you know, it was couples, too. Right. You know, that, that's what was nice. Yesterday was Valentine's Day. We had um, one couple made this part of their Valentine's Day. And that was our uh, uh, Austin. And then... Uh, I must have been gone. Austin's the fighter that I sponsored. Oh, yeah. I must not have been here. The cigar would lasted longer than this fight. Did I tell? <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you uh, Saron was in? Oh uh, yeah, you did. Yeah, Saron came in. Yeah, he uh, he lives local, I think. And uh, was his was his girl, and then him and Joshua were talking about LARPing. Yeah, that was. I bet that was exciting. So I was talking to his girl about what a bunch of nerds they were. <laughs> and uh, is she a queen LARPer? 
No, she was she was really cool. She was cooler than Darren and Josh both. <laughs> but uh, did you tell the nerds come down here to the basement? <laughs> like, go to the right, basement where you belong. Right. <laughs> no, I, so I, I walked. I was doing something. And I walked back in, and I walked. And I, as I walked past, I heard somebody say something about, "Well, you know, the replica." And I just turned around and went, "Nerds," <laughs> and I went back to over by the counter, and uh, and then I started talking to her. I was like, "What's going on with this?" And then you go in the military. <laughs> <laughs> do you uh do you watch the hawkeye series no it was pretty good but there was a uh, quite a bit of larping involved in the hawkeye series and i bet you all the larpers were definitely uh sharing that around so they got a bunch of rules so i was listening to them because there were only two people in here uh there was somebody else in here maybe steve and uh but they were the only two in here i was listening to them and they got a bunch of rules really like their little foam swords have to pass what they have to pass some sort of, of quality control. Yeah, they got to they got to be cleared in order to be when they have those big things that you yeah. see out at Gordon Moore yeah. where people are just flailing each other with styrofoam. That that's funny. They got to pass some sort of <clears throat> control. I think that we should get Steve into LARPing. So you can't, you know, you can't have a wooden dow rod wrapped in this uh, light thing of styrofoam right. and, and go out there and be, which is what I would do. I need some pool <laughs> pool noodles and I could go LARP with them. That's exactly what I would do. Can we get Steve all suited up? I think him with a styrofoam sword would relieve a lot of his stress. And like then if they he got, could go stab a bunch of other people. And then they got, so this is what don't make sense to me. I understand, you know, I understand. It, it actually seems like it might be fun going out there and beating somebody with a foam sword. I mean, that sounds like it might be kind of fun. Or a big foam axe. Sure, sword, sure, You know what I mean? Sure. You're, you're not yeah. hurting nobody, but, man, you're getting a lot of frustration out. Right. And, uh, and exercise. But they got, they got. People that come there and, and they don't have weapons, they they do magic. Oh. And I'm like, how do you, how does that work? Do you, Some nerd's going to run up to me and go, you're frozen. And I'm going, no, dude, I've got a sword. Your head's gone. <laughs> I'm just going to beat you with this sword now. That's not how this works. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's not how this works. I removed your head. Right. You're not casting spells. What are you talking about? What were you watching? Uh, oh, uh, Jeff turned me on to that animated series uh, that's dubbed. Helsing Ultimate. It was, say it again. Hel- Ultimate Helsing is actually what it is. Ultimate Helsing Abridged. Yeah. So I watched the anime. The <laughs> anime, the original anime is actually really good. Yeah. And then so when Jeff uh, when Jeff uh, told me, he sent me the link and he goes, watch this. I turned it on the TV because we weren't watching nothing anyway. Right. We turned it on the TV. And I got, so I... I thought it was even better than everybody else because I got all the context. I like knew what was going on in the show as the context was going on. Right, hilarious. I uh, absolutely I, hilarious. I, so he goes, he goes. You watched that? What was the other one? Uh, Invincible. I think. Yeah. 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 So he goes, you you like that, didn't you? And I was like, yeah, I like that. He goes, this one's more gory. And I was like, okay, a lot more gory. And uh, and it was funny. It was witty. It was funny. Uh, uh, if you're a diehard Catholic, don't watch it. Right. <laughs> right. But did you notice the release dates? It took them a year. Oh, yeah. From one to the other. Yep. Yeah, and to uh, to make them. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was pretty insane. That like, Because I was looking at the release dates, and it was like November 2011, and the next, one, the next episode was November 2012. Right. And so on. And I'm like, what? In the, you know, so I expected so, a little bit more. So for- if, you, if you like that for the comedy, we'll have to go in there and find the one. There's one that does uh, Dragon Ball. You know what Dragon Ball yeah, is, right? Yeah, right. So uh, there's one that does the Dragon Ball, and it's just like like he'll fight Kermit the Frog, and he'll fight. And it's just – and that that's hilarious, too. That's right. That's good, too, because it's just Kermit the Frog talking all this smack. <laughs> and it's that's hilarious, too. It's great. It's like when Mickey Mouse was on South Park. Right, right. right. Oh, that was – them guys are geniuses. They are. Absolutely. They are absolute geniuses. They're good at what they do. And they got riders. I don't know where they find these riders at to match. Uh, trap houses. It has to be. <laughs> you know, they just got done smoking a fatty rock, and they're just like, bro, I got this idea. Speaking <laughs> of fatty rocks, I'm going to take advantage of that new uh, uh, branding policy. Yeah? Yeah. What are you going to get? Free free crack pipes. Free man. crack pipes? Free crack pipes. How many How many get shipped? How would you not take advantage of Do that? they get shipped to the house like the COVID test? I don't know. I mean. Do- are you allowed for a household? <laughs> Not to COVID test? Now, do you just get a crack pipe? Does it come pre-screened? Let me tell you something. Or do you, do you I have to go get the I think that's the best boys? thing he's done. If he's doing that for the, for the 
Well, it's like to a, battle coronavirus. That's the best thing he's done. What's that? Because we all know crackheads are invincible. Yeah. So. Well, I don't smoke crack, but I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't looking, I'm looking forward to all the cheap labor that's going to come back. Oh, bro. Oh, Home man. Depot's going to be packed. Man. Everybody's going to be outside. You can get your car washed for $10 again. You know what? I that's mean, what we need to battle. Good wash, too. We're, that He's single-handedly lowering inflation. What a rock star. You know, I think we have a son to thank. Right, probably. It's probably it's probably his thoughts. Probably his idea. Again, smoked a fatty rock. Dude, that's so, I have this great idea. <laughs> that's so dumb. We, So we've said it a couple times, We and we'll say it again. I try not to touch politics, but you got to understand. So the free crack pipes isn't actually in the kits. It's not actually in the kits. But it's still dumb because I read what was in the kits. So it's like alcohol swabs, chapstick. Chapstick. Is it chapstick? With it's like- to fight the opioid crisis. So you're going to give them alcohol swabs. There was something else in it. I can't remember. Right. It's, it's, it's something insignificant. Right. But chapstick. You're going to get a what? Do and I've never been an opioid opioid addict. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been an opioid addict. So I don't know. Do your lips get really, really dry? I don't know. And is, is that, that why you need the chapstick? Is what it kind a, of chapstick is it going to be? Is it for? If you it's know. Carmex, I'm definitely in because I've got a problem with that stuff. So, are do you perform acts to get this stuff? That's why you need the chapstick. I, I have no idea. Well, maybe. I mean, I don't. I don't know how. Maybe that's why you need the alcohol swabs and the chapstick together. Well, that's so why you can like clean off your job. So, <laughs> put the chapstick on. Uh, got a little Buffalo Bob playing in the background, Buffalo Bill playing in the background. Sure, sure. So uh, what else comes with it? Chapstick, alcohol swabs. Those are the two. Uh, there that was something stuck else out. in it that was just, yeah, those were the two things that stuck out to me. I actually went, re- I read, I go and read this stuff before I, I don't read. make judgments and make fun of it. But, uh, well, I went and read that because I seen all the memes and I was like, no way. This is no, and then I was just absolutely befuddled at um it's real <laughs> it's so, a real thing it so doesn't make any sense they've set up <clears throat> centers in like big cities you know where safe it's like, injection sites it's, yeah and you know it's if you're gonna do it you know why not have clean why why spread more disease you know you know they they have you ever seen the show intervention no so the show intervention is they follow these drug addicts around and uh the best one is girl that huffs air duster and um, that's the best one. I know you've you, okay. You've seen ta- South Park, so you've seen the episode where they follow where intervention followed Tally around. Okay. okay. No, I didn't see that. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. Okay. So or I don't remember it. So they make fun of this girl, and they're following Tally around. And this girl takes this big. She takes this can of air duster, and she goes, you know, she takes a big old hit, and then she goes, "It's like walking on sunshine." So picture that. Right. Only Tally. Yeah. yeah it. Right. It right. was just hilarious. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, he laughed way too hard at it. It's funny now. You can laugh at it. It's okay to laugh at it, everybody. You can go watch it and laugh at it because that girl is doing really, 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 really well. So me and Sarah watched that episode about two or three weeks ago. Right. And she looked the girl up to see you know, how, how she's, doing. she's doing absolutely great. So it's okay to go laugh at it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, but in the, at the end, when they do the intervention, it's all about how to stop these people from enabling them. Right, you know, then you know if you stop them from if you stop enabling them, then they they have no choice. They either have to go be homeless drug addicts, and you know what I mean, trying to force them to their to their bottom, to the rock bottom. Right. So it's just weird that the government is uh, enabling. Enabling. It's enabling drug. I mean, they must make a bunch of money on opiates. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, every government program has worked flawlessly. So. so. Yeah, the war on drugs is just, abs- I mean, there's no drugs no more. Right. Yeah. They're all gone. They've done a great job. So, uh, anyway, I uh, I smoked through this cigar super fast. <clears throat> Faster than I have. Yeah. It's, it's kind of uncommon for me to smoke through it real fast. Well, I've kind of noticed this one's a little... Uh, a little damp in the... A little damp. So. Yeah, a little, little 70. Those things really so need to I've be been, about 62. So I've been kind of uh, babying it so it doesn't tunnel on me. Gotcha. 
Oh, I did a thing in Minnesota. <laughs> uh, in Minnesota? In Minnesota. So we have um, the perfect when hash. Did you go to Minnesota? I didn't go to Minnesota. It's like, I wish I could go everywhere my cigars have gone. Oh. Uh, so I, uh, so I, I posted up. So Crux is a cigar brand. We have, we have some here. And they're real strong up there because that's where they're from. So they hit the right. you know nearby ta- like p- table thirty six here, right? You know, right. Um, so they're they're super strong up north. And uh, so I have cigars at this place called the Perfect Dash. This guy uh, he was in the car business and he went into the cigar shop to uh, just get a cigar, chill out, and he had a for sale sign on the cigar shop. And so he ended up buying the whole entire cigar shop. And that's what he's going to do now. He just dove in with both. <laughs> so you never know who's going to. I've got four one wheels laying on the floor. So <laughs> right, bad decisions everywhere. So it was really cool, like hearing his story. And he's just like, "Hey, I'm new at this too." And uh, he took a chance on the on the product. And uh, so since we have our, our some of our hats, well, we got 80, 80 hats and spent a ton of money on them. But uh, yeah, that's so, a little overkill. I did. I went a, I went a little overboard a little on that. A too far. Uh, both feet. That's why I jump in. So I uh, I posted up on that page, that business page, uh, the perfect dash, and I said, uh, you know, uh, just trying to get a little more brand loyalty up there. So I uh, I said, you know, post a picture of you enjoying this cigar, or post it on Table 36's page, and, uh, you know, I'm going to just ship you a hat. Right. Just for free. You know. And then, you know, so it's because I can't get there. I mean, they have more, they've had so much snow this year. Right. You know, I'm going to have to wait till August. Right. You know, to get there. Well, that's the best time to go up there anyway. It's Probably so. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> but I, I'd like for the brand to, to build so, like, I can go up there and have a killer event and, right. and uh, you know, uh, give away even more stuff. I think that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to buy my business. Like, well, <clears throat> I'm going to have to get some practice in. So I, so when I go to Florida, yeah, we can actually sell cigars. Okay, <laughs> I can give you a just just you know it's, a, it's your week off. You could uh you could go uh, over to uh, St. Louis Cigar Shop. Say yo, not, mother effer. Yo, mother effer, buy these cigars. Oh, I walked in. I walked in to get biscuits and gravy. Yeah, uh, Saturday. Right. I walked in to get biscuits and gravy, and I opened the door. And you know what I said real loud as soon as I walked through the door. What? <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah well, I'm, allowed, I'm, allowed, I'm allowed to say it in there. Right, I've right. always been jealous of it. Right, I've always wanted to just call people that. Right, you better you better uh, clarify so you don't get canceled. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's the c word. Uh, so the lady at Fox's Boxes who has really great biscuits and gravy, uh, she's from London. I don't know. She's from London. I think she's from Georgia. <laughs> well, she's she says she's from London. Right. And so over across the uh, pond, they have a term of endearment, uh, the, a word that is actually hated over here, right. absolutely hated over here. Uh, it starts with the letter C. Sounds like punt. It sounds like punt. <laughs> uh, you know, that's a term of endearment over there. And I've always been jealous that, I'm, that I can't say it like that. That's one of the words I'm jealous of. See, th- and, uh, and now I have a place where I can just open the door and scream it. <laughs> and that's awesome. I, I like it. <laughs> That's that's the main reason to go buy biscuits and gravy for me right there. Yeah, it's the only it, it's good one biscuits and gravy too though. Yeah, oh, so good. I'm not a fan, not of hers, but in general. But I I just don't do biscuits and gravy when I go out. Have you had theirs? I haven't. Yeah, you need to have. I don't this. even know I'm, if when I, we're done, I'm going and getting some. I don't so. even think I got any. Is it's not? Are they open? No, it's Tuesday. Know. They're closed on Tuesdays. They were I, open yesterday. They were. It was Valentine's Day yesterday. Oh. What in the world? Yeah, I don't think they're open. Come on now. Remember, they they only work like four Come hours a day. Now. Baker's should, hours. Baker's hours. Back to that again. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't even have biscuits and gravy when Mike and Mary were there. Like, I just, it just seemed, I don't know. It's never been a thing for me. So Mike had good biscuits <clears throat> and gravy. Yep. But these are better. Sorry, yep. Mike, because I know Mike probably watches. Probably. Sorry, Mike, but these are better. Um, he I'm doesn't. Not, he doesn't care. He's on his boat. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not particularly fond of the biscuits themselves, but the gravy is so good. Yeah. So you know I mean, the biscuits are just biscuits. You know they're still good. They're good biscuits. 
They're just kind of the wrong type of biscuits for okay biscuits and gravy, in my opinion. She uh, so everything she does is from scratch. I think so, that's pretty cool. The biscuits taste good and everything. Don't get me wrong; they're good biscuits, but the gravy is. It's unbelievable. What do you like about that gravy? It's peppery. It's got plenty of so I don't like sausage. I'm not a big sausage person, but it's peppery and it's got and it's got plenty of sausage in it. But the sausage actually tastes and you can actually taste the gravy itself. Nice. So and it's thick. Gravy needs to be thick for biscuits and gravy. It's really really good. Nice. Yeah, I just I don't know if I go to a breakfast place, it's never something I I want to grab. So I'd rather have eggs or omelets or something i don't want to make at the house right you know french toast i ain't doing all that work well eggs are easy eggs are easy french toast is easy i've been making french toast since i was like 10 i love making french toast but what a mess it is a mess yeah it's such easy. a such a mess pancakes i can't make pancakes to save my life i don't know if i've ever tried i can't cook to save my life so we we'll just figure that out, or I'm just going to starve to death. I thought it's I could cook. Good thing restaurants exist. I, I thought I could cook until I got with Ginger. Then I just figured out I was just really heating up some ingredients. Right. <laughs> right. Ginger's over there like, well, we got to shave this uh, horseradish down. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? It, doesn't it come in a shaker jar? Like, <laughs> it's got to shave. You know, or whatever. This horseradish down. Man, when I went to dinner with Mark for Did you see that earthworm gif? No. It's hilarious. No. It's this turtle. He's trying to eat this earthworm, and he's pulling on it. It pulls him back and just flips him over and messes him all up. What? Little, little bitty turtle. Oh, okay. It messes him all up. I shared that with her. I was like, this is you if you were an earthworm. <laughs> on core strength, just messing that turtle up. Yeah, she's uh, <sighs> she's kind of excited for the gym to get built back here. I'm going to work on that a little bit today when I get back. I'm excited for the gym. Are you? I'm going to get back there and get pumped. Are you? You're going to get Come jacked? out here, have a cigar, and, can get and watch my fish. Yeah. I mean. What is in place we're building? <laughs> right. Do some yoga somewhere. Got to figure out Got to figure out a sauna here next. Oh, man, I'd figure love to have it. Somewhere. I'd love to have a sauna, too. Man, I've we have room, and we have the power. Right. Actually, some of those, uh, my mom's got one. It's just a 110 plug. It's a infrared sauna. Just need the money to build it. Well, I, well, no, she she just bought, like, one of those ones. You, it's like a single person. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's got, like, uh, I'm sure the new ones have Bluetooth, but this one had, like, a little car stereo in it. and You can uh, plug plug your phone in. I don't know. I think she just goes in there and reads. And since it's a dry sauna, it doesn't really mess up the books or anything. See, I like, I like the wet sauna, though. I like the humidity. I do like the humidity. And it would go over well here because everything else is humid here, too. Yeah, so all right. We need the humidity here. Oh, we have enough cedar. That's all it is. Where's their cedar at? I think there's cedar out in the shipping container. Maybe not enough. There's, that's where all that metal's going to go that was blowing all over the city. In the shipping container? Yeah, there's my, no, there might not be. Why well, open that shipping container so I had those humidors in there? We could use that metal for the sauna. Could we? Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Well, we're about to go in construction mode again. Right. Here we go. It ain't even been a year. It's never been a year. <laughs> I was telling I was telling Ronnie that the other day. I don't like doing construction, but I get forced to every once in a while. Well, it's your idea half the time. <laughs> People love that walk in. Yeah. People love that walk in, and they love and they love this other half. Yeah. I think I think this other half it was is, so needed. Was needed. Yeah. So needed. And I think that having it quiet over here. Yeah, it's not. You know, so when I go to so I go to a lot more cigar shops than you do, and. Uh, when I was down at Grand Crew, there's one TV. See, that one just looks uncomfortable. Is that the one, the shotgun one? Uh, it look, yeah, it looks that shotgun. you were at last week? Yep. That one, they just... It forces conversation. Lit was really, really, it's a really, really nice shop. Yeah. And I know Mark watches. I don't know if the people that own Lit watch, but I, I it's a really, really nice shop. And they're really, really friendly over there. But it just, man, once people started filing in, I was just like... You don't you're do well with people, though. Yeah, you're too close to me. Go yeah, you don't I'm do well. I'm leaving. I'm yeah. out. <laughs> you don't do well with people. Now, it, that one, uh, Grand Cruz always had this vibe. And when I was building this one um, in this area, you know, it, it had to have the same neighborhood vibe. Right. And so uh, one I haven't been to ever that I'd like to go to is... Uh, Santino's? 
has been uh is uh stanley's downtown there's okay. one on washington avenue and it's uh, uh actually their house cigar used to be the peacemaker like a long time ago and uh so it's supposedly just crazy cool there but what i haven't been so i just i like the vibe at grand crew there's tons of law enforcement fire guys um uh jimmy was telling me that uh when the snow came uh the shop the shop just opened because a couple of the police officers have keys <laughs> they, they're already out and they're like they're shoveling his walk they opened right. the store and <laughs> started coffee <laughs> i was like i was like well that's a lot of trust and he goes well, they're uh, cops. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they just they're cops. Just let them do their thing. I've never, I've never watched a single movie ever. They're cops. <laughs> they're, they're completely and totally trustworthy. Right. Yeah. So yeah, they. Uh, and I just kind of laughed. I was like, man, I was like, you know, but I have, I have Jeff living in the shop. So right. I mean, I right. guess, I guess I'm on the same page. Right. You know, Jeff can come up here and open anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff sells cigars quite often. Whenever. Oh, uh, when I was when I was cleaning that tank we were getting a little busy and i was like jeff will you handle that what's that the customers yeah we're cleaning this tank <laughs> yeah. uh jeff stitch or jeff no jeff in the back yeah jeff, jeff said back. jeff stitch said he ran a couple transactions yeah uh not saturday night he has before though yeah because i've been busy doing something so he's uh he's <laughs> contemplating staying he's not gonna go back to new jersey yeah he's contemplating staying and I said, well, if that's the case, what do you want to do? He's like, yeah. He goes, I already, I already been running some transactions. And I go, well, that's, where, that's where would you, to me. Where would you stick him? Well, we're going to have a second shop open in a month. Right. Maybe. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, here it'll and there. Be, it'll be open in a month. So you, you'll it's be, all tedious stuff left. In, in well, no, it's not that. It's uh, That stuff takes forever, it's, but once the tedious stuff is done and over with, like uh, that drywall. And it, that, that, oh, I know. He's going go to yeah. go so fast It'll be on done. that. It'll be done like that. So, no, the that's not my concern now. My concern now is everything's costed so much more money that I don't know if I'll have enough to stock an Alton location. Uh, there's two houses for sale. Yep. So if you're interested in some rental homes for sale, uh, we have they both two. have good tenants in them. Yep. Uh, both pay. Actually, one one pays all the time. One comes up here. He's coming up today to pay. Yep. So they both have good tenants in them. And uh, you know, uh, if you you read all about that passive income, it's time for you yep. to get some. They're making some money. Yep. Uh, we guarantee you to make profit. Uh, I don't guarantee you make anything. Well, right now at this. If you buy the houses, yeah. if you buy the houses and you insure them, then eventually you will find a way to make money. Ah, <laughs> uh, who is it? I don't know. I'm gonna. Go, I gotta go get my knife anyway. Yeah, go grab your knife. Okay. I can't tell who that is. I don't know. They're just standing there though. So we're gonna cut open an Isla del Sol, which you don't know anything about the Isla del Sols. They're. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're short filler. I'm not positive on that, but uh, they are really, really popular. Uh, I got a little bit of sugar at the end of them. They're really mellow, really mild. Uh, we've chose that one today because uh, they're kind of fresh in my mind. Um, I was just on an Instagram page the other day complaining about something that has to do with the Isla del Souls and a lot of things that come from a lot of things that come from uh, the same brand. Who is it? Who? Oh yeah, Jay owes this money. Jay paid. Um, Jay paid. Jay paid. <laughs> um, I can't believe I finished that cigar. That cigar but, didn't get bitter. Sorry. To but we're gonna cut open this Isla del Sol. T tell me your uh, favorite thing about the Isla del Sol. My favorite thing. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna, I'll let you do the honors. Gonna, let me see it. Let me see the cigar real quick. <clears throat> sure. So, so whenever you get the Isla del Sol, watch closely, folks. Out of the package, right? Yeah. They're they're packed in here. Everybody knows how cigars are packed. So whenever you get the <laughs> That's what happens every time. The humidor, look, the floor. Look at this crap. Yep. Look at this crap. Dear Drew Estates, stop this nonsense. And it's it's garbage. Look at it. It's pure garbage. And I will clean this up later. No, you won't. Yes, I will. I already I cleaned up the last tobacco that you left. Um, I cleaned up the first one. Um, <clears throat> but it's every time you take a cigar out of these, the acids, the I don't know, 
I, don't, I guess they were participating in the free crack pipe program when they came up with this. <laughs> I have no idea what anybody was thinking when they decided that this was something that they should do. Because it is absolutely not something they should do. It's, it's terrible, and I hate them for it. It looks pretty in the very beginning. In the, when you first open the box and you never touch a cigar <laughs> in it, it still doesn't really look pretty. It's not inviting to me because it's, it's garbage. But... Drew Estates is the strippers of the cigar room because they come with stripper glitter, glitter. and everything. So, and that's why we're going to cut it apart because we're going to cut that cigar apart simply because I wanted to bitch about this. All right. And it's not even a good box. It's a cheap piece of... <clears throat> well, it's an affordable cigar. I hate you, Drew Estates. You don't hate them. You don't hate um, them. Name a cigar by them that I like. Uh, have you smoked the Underground? I haven't. Really? I haven't. That's a good cigar. It might be a little too strong for you. Uh, the Maduro, anyway. Um, the Connecticut's super good. I haven't, um, I haven't had an Underground, so fair What enough. about a Liga Privada? Nope. Really? Nope. The Ligas are expensive. That's a Drew Estate cigar. Yeah. Really? Dude's got the... I, you can... I, why does he... Why? So I understand. I understand those and the Bettys and the... Yeah. And the... Uh, um, are they, are they tobacco too? Tobacco? tobacco? Yeah, yeah, tobacco special. So I like the tobacco. Right. I mean, it's just a sugar tip cigar, but it's it it tastes good. I don't like those. They just they don't taste good to me. Too much sugar. People love them, but they just don't. That's going to be short filler, right? Should be, for the price point. All right, for our backseat cigar roller, we'll go ahead and get in the comments there. Right, Mark. And explain every single thing about it, uh, Mark. Did he do it on the last one? Uh, he did. What? He, he, he come on and told us to leave some in the comments. So. Oh, that's right. So one. So so we we at least know somebody that's a professional. Yeah, or at least pretends to be. Right. All right. Right. Now, see, this looks like it's coming out of there. Well, so, wrapper well, leaf's kind of thin. Off a little bit here. Wrapper leaf's kind of thin. Not bad. It's not coming. That stuff is not coming out of the cigar yet. Yet it's a short filler, right? Yeah. So it's gonna be that. Yeah. Here it's gonna be anyway. that. We're gonna get down to the binder here. I just I like how they smell. They smell like a candy bar. Well, all cigars smell good though. No, but these smell like artificially good. Like they smell like sugar and chocolate, kind of. That guy come in and he goes, "Oh, it tastes like chocolate." And I was like, "These nasty Java things." Oh, you know Java's uh, Drew Estate and Rocky Patel. Oh, yeah. We'll get this binder off. And there's the binder. Oh, almost. There we go. I binder. see a vein in it right away. Yeah. Is that what I'm looking at? Oh, it's just on the edge, though. Not a big one. Look at it. Look at, look at it. <laughs> right. Like, Wait. I'm just... I'm, I'm still, uh, you know, there we go. There's the, there's the money shot right here. I mean, when you can see it. Yeah. When you can see it. Actually, it, there's probably longer filler in the box. <laughs> <laughs> the, so the box is full of long filler. The right. cigar is full of short filler. This is a good leaf right here. Good, good job. Good leaf there. Um, I'm not, yeah. So, and then you have what looks like. And smells like that smells like delicious pipe tobacco. That does smell like delicious pipe tobacco. Then that's something. Stick but, that in your pipe and smoke it. Like clearly you could. And well, and it'd probably be just as delicious as the cigar itself. Well it wouldn't taste like uh, sugar though, because sugar's just on the outside binder, right? Yeah. It? Yeah, well on the wrapper. On the wrapper, that's what I meant. Well, we gotta be correct because we got Well Mark Mark will come in and correct me, don't worry. Cigar nerds coming in. So, you know, that is the most beautiful display of short filler that I've ever seen. It does smell good. It smells really good. I, like, I wish I had a pipe here. I would smoke that. I would smoke that as like a dessert. And that's what they are. They're just dessert cigars. Oh, it smells good in here. It smells like a chocolate factory. Oh, man. I'm... Calm down, Willy Wonka. <laughs> Look, I mean, so compared to the cigar we cut, the very first cigar that we unrolled, uh, and uh, 
the very first cigar that we unrolled, we're you know we're making fun of that short filler. That right. was that was. So I'm gonna I'm gonna retract and say so that's that, a good medium filler, and that this so, is. I mean, look at that. That is. But that that short filler, medium filler, whatever you want to call it, didn't smell as good as that one does. Well, no, no, that smells really, really good. Yeah. So because this isn't, and so the. So I wonder what because because the short filler is just choppings. It's just what's yeah, left yeah. after they chopped it yeah, off the cigar. Right. So I wonder what cigar that comes from. Um, that or is it a pipe blend? Oh, because okay. the Betty's you can buy that fat bottom Betty tobacco in pipe can. Pipe yeah, in not, pipe he, not here. You can't. No, we don't support pipe smokers here. Sorry. Nope. I have to send you down the road to Farm Fresh every time you come in and ask, which is at least once a week. What are you saying? You're saying we should get it's pipe tobacco. I've been saying that for at least two years. Probably six years, but at least two. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about I don't like smelling fruity cigars when I'm smoking my traditional cigar and a lot of the pipe tobacco is pipes smell really really good they do and it smells like this right I mean but it's just they one smell of those like things that when they're burning too though it's just a cigar shop you don't want to smell like the vape shop down the road it's a cigar shop uh, um, <laughs> it's a cigar shop it's a mechanical shop it's a uh, soon to be uh, a proud gym and uh, and then it's uh, you know a one wheel shop so, in a burnout shop. We got to do burnouts outside. Right. So. I was telling, um, I was telling, uh, we were talking about the pawn shop yesterday uh, with uh, Warren at uh, Midwest. Tropical Fish. Midwest Pet Store, I think, in Jerseyville. Um, really nice guy if you need fish or uh, or anything like that. He's a really nice guy. He's really knowledgeable about fish, too. I was going to really, say, tons really of knowledge. Um and he answered your call. Yep, he called me back. Called, yeah, he's really he was really really busy. He was constantly on that phone. He was the only one there yesterday. Oh. But uh, really nice guy. Uh, it's another small business, and we love small businesses. So um, he's up in Jerseyville, super dude. But uh, I lost I lost my train of thought. We were talking about the pawn shop. Yeah, and because uh, he remembered the pawn shop, we were talking about the pawn shop, and I and uh, I he was. You know, talking about how you gotta, in order to have a pawn shop, you really need to participate with your local, with your local law enforcement. It just saves you so much trouble, sure, and uh, so much hassle and so much trouble. And I was telling him, I was like, yeah, that's why, that's why when county shows up, because we're being stupid outside. <laughs> that's why when they show up, they just, they kind of just show up and go, well, you guys need to quit being idiots for a few minutes at least, right? And uh, you know, wait for me to get down the road on another call, and. Uh, and, you know, we don't have problems because we were... We were helpful. Always helpful and professional with them, unlike other pawn shops, which, right. which think that they're outlaws. Right. And you're not. You're just a small business owner. And I, wish I, had a, I wish I had a Brandon pipe right now. Oh. I, I could be smoking this. I would... I, I kind of... Man, it's, it's... I'm kind of craving it. Like, it smells good. Like, I want to put it in a pipe and sit down and, like, read the Wall Street Journal. Right. There and, you go. And smoke. All kinds of class now. Right. All kinds of class. So what you're saying is we can't have pipe tobacco because we can't have the class of pipe smokers. Well, don't you think that's going to ruin that's the more image of an we have? Thing. That, yeah, uh, you know. Well, well, I mean, it, listen, it ruins our image. Don't bring your fancy pipe in here. Bring your corn cob pipe in here. There's four one wheels under this table. There's a there surfboard is. over here. There's, there's another surfboard over there. There's a surfboard over there. There's burnout marks in the store. <laughs> Actually, where we're at, I did a burnout on a motorcycle. You did a burnout on a scooter in the building. Uh, I've done two burnouts in the building on scooters. Uh, the mini bike. Yep, the gold did, mini bike. I did a burnout on the gold mini bike right in the middle of the shop. Yeah. And I did a burnout on the uh, ruckus in the middle of the shop. Right. So. And then, uh, you know, there may or may not. Two ruckuses. Yeah. The first truck is too, right? Because I replaced the engine back here while I was working. At the <laughs> yeah, so that that's gonna you know every cigar shop has its vibe. Ours is uh, be good to people, uh, don't be an asshole. Be okay to people. Be good to people. Some people deserve to and treat bad. Only you know, yeah. There's uh there's some there's some people getting their uh, their justice soon too. So anyway, there's uh. Man, it smells good. I don't know if I want a candy bar or to smoke 
one of these. Well, we have plenty of expired candy bars at Prime. I had one yesterday. It was delicious. Like I had one yesterday. You had, a white, you had a white chocolate Snickers. Nope. They weren't originally white chocolate, but they are now. <laughs> I had uh, the last <clears throat> uh, the last candy bar. You know, for, I mean, this is. Um, it's a $6 cigar. Yeah. So in Illinois, they're five eighty eight plus tax. So they come to about six something after tax. Um but they smoke good. And then if you're smoking a short filler cigar, so imagine all this stuff that was in in the cigar. Um, this is why your ash falls off so quickly. Right. So because it's just, I mean, it's it's just burning this. It's just held together by these guys here. So if you're smoking too fast or too slow, uh, you know, we're not going to get into Caden's nerd talk about cigar smoking. But, um yeah. Uh, we will next week. Oh, yeah? When you, our guest is Mark. Are we going to get super nerdy tomorrow or next week? I mean, Mark's uh, going to be here. I'm going to check out. And Mark's going to... I'm gonna, we're going to let Mark cut up his own cigar. Okay. And I'm sure he's going to get super nerdy about it. I hope so. So, and then I'm going to make fun of him the entire time he's doing it. The entire time. You gonna wear, you going to wear a dick skin? The entire time. I can't because I've only got that green one. Oh. So I can't wear one. Unless, unless, well, I guess I could. I'd just be a floating head over here with black spots <laughs> here and there. Please do. Right. Please do. All right. I think that should happen. I'm having enough trouble with that green screen as it is for some weird reason. I think it was the lights. We got the lights it on. It might have been. It yeah. might have been. Because we needed it brighter on us. We'll find out. Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. Um. So a guy came in and he was buying cigars. He's going to Mexico. Okay. And he, and he asked me, he goes, well, do you recommend me picking up anything in Mexico? And I said, no. No. And then I went, wait. I said, if you bring us back, if you bring us back a Mexico, uh, if you buy a Cuban, I said, make sure it's a Cuban. If you buy us a Cuban in Mexico and you bring it back, mm-hmm. I will trade you a good quality cigar for it. Just to cut it up. Just so we could, I said, we would love to cut one up. We nice. would absolutely love to cut a Cuban cigar from Mex that you get in Mexico. We would love to cut that up. Yeah. So if you bring me one back, I will give you I, a cigar of your choice. A good quality cigar of your choice, and uh, I will trade you. And uh, <clears throat> I even gave him a box, right. so it looks like you know, I bought you know it's got our you know it's got a tech stamp and stuff on the box. I even gave him a box and said, "This way you can definitely get it. Right. You should be able to definitely get it through." Yeah, we don't have tech stamps on the box. They're not. There's no tech stamp. Well, then how do they? Because you've given boxes to people going on cruises so that they can bring. So how does that work then? It just looks like it come from over here. Okay. Yep. It's just a, uh, something that's legal in the States. So, yeah. Uh, and I don't think there's tax stamps on chewing tobacco. Mm. I was talking to a guy. I don't know a lot about it. Oh, but, I, don't, I don't know. But somebody was uh, telling me about a hustle they had down in Florida. And uh, so they uh, they would go to, an, I guess, so, to, so cigar tax is different than cigarette tobacco. And it's different than chewing tobacco tax. So, um, you know, it's so like the loose. Well, it's tobacco. not here, is it? It's tobacco, so it's all thirty-seven percent here. Right? Nope, no nope, thirty-six. But yeah, no, it's. it's <laughs> Somebody uh, was telling me they passed that menthol ban. In the country. Yeah. Oh, really? That that's a thing. That menthols are going away. They I thought they were it. keeping menthols because of um, poor poor communities need the menthol. I don't know. Somebody told me that they passed it. Because huh. they were asking me about the flavored stuff. I was asking if it was going to go away since they passed the menthol. Yeah, I don't. And yeah. and who knows if that person is up on it? Oh yeah, I don't. I'm not up on it, so I can't tell you. I'll I'll know <laughs> if I go to order and they're like, oh, we can't sell that to you. <clears throat> so that's how I find out. Right. <clears throat> no, can't have that. Jay's going to be upset. Can you smell? Can you smell those from here? From there? No. Dude, I smell it. Well, it's probably and you threw the tobacco everywhere. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. So next week's Mark. Uh, we're gonna try to get Kate on. Uh, we'll take some uh, some GoPro footage too. Whenever we all get to go one wheeling, right? I when Mark comes up, well, hopefully the weather's decent, and then we have it's next Wednesday, or whatever. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Whatever's gonna happen next Tuesday. Right. Probably a hurricane. Probably. You never know. Mid- Welcome to the Midwest. Midwest hurricane. So welcome to the Midwest. Look at that. So yeah, that's that's a beautiful. That was a good cigar to unroll. It really showed the the absolute clear definition of short filler, but tasty. 
Yeah, they're not a bad cigar. They're really popular. People love them. And they're just easy to smoke. That's why. People absolutely love them. Look at that cap holding on. I despise them because of the mess that has to be cleaned up <laughs> every single time. Let's see if we can unroll. I was trying to get some out for a guy the other day, and I couldn't even. They were, they were packed so tight in the bottom. And I was trying to get them out without making the mess. So I was, it just didn't work. So I was making the the joke that the packing material was longer filler than the actual cigar. and uh, It really is. It really is. That's the same filler that's in that uh, cigar, we, the first cigar we cut open. You know, we they, we, they, they put that in the box. Right. Recycle, reuse, and re-something. Yeah, just stop. Just right. roll, make more cigars. All right. Uh, I mean, why are they doing it? I don't understand why are they doing it anyway. Is it just bad product, maybe? Or yeah, I'm sure. You know what? We'll ask. Uh, we'll ask tobacconist nerd Mark. Yes, Mark will know. Yep. Mark will definitely know. Yep. We'll ask him. Mark will comment below. And well, they do it because that brand of tobacco comes from the this tobacco plant that's grown in this specific way, and it's only good for. Mark's a nerd. Shut up, nerd. Right. All right. All right. Are you done? I'm done. That's one thirty. People Hour keep co- people keep coming in. All right. <clears throat> this guy. That's just Kevin. Nobody cares about Kevin. Nobody cares about Kevin. I named my dog after you. <laughs> I did. I named my dog after you. Kevin. Kevin. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It started. It started out as a joke, right? Because it annoyed the old lady. So it just started out as. I thought it was funny, so I just kept calling the dog Kevin to watch her get annoyed by it. And now the dog comes to Kevin. So, <laughs> so. All right, we're going to clean up mess. and uh, I'm going to clean up the mess, I guess. It doesn't matter. Either I, way. I'll be back. After, Either way. After I leave. Uh, yeah, uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, do all the things. Uh, definitely share. Call Mark a nerd. Uh, call Mark a nerd in the comments below. i tell you what, uh, um... Uh, first person to call Mark a nerd in the comments below gets a free hat. Man, those are expensive. Yeah, well. Can we give him a crappy shirt? You're the one that bought, and you're the one that paid $80 for them. No. So, or yeah. bought 80 of them, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> the first person to call Mark a nerd in the comments below gets a free hat. Is his name Mark on YouTube? So, so Leo, you get a free hat. If he calls Mark. <laughs> Leo's too nice. <laughs> Leo's too nice to call somebody a nerd. <laughs> Mark, Leo's the first one to comment every time, though. So. He's got to call Mark a nerd. Mark, you yep. are a nerd. You are a cigar nerd. Cigar nerd. Mark. And, uh, I mean, just, you don't have to call him a nerd, but just the first person to make fun of Mark in the comments. No, I think call him a nerd. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Let's just make fun. Let's just make that a we thing. We weren't going to give away anything until we had 100 well, subscribers. You know, let's just make you it just a thing to make fun up. of Mark. If you, made it, if you made it this far. Every episode, we'll just make it a thing to make fun of Mark in, in every comment section in every episode. <laughs> All right, I'm done. All right, we're out. See ya.